So <clears throat> if I'm going to uh, be egalitarian about this, of course, um, as far as my war on the medical holistic system, and yeah, it's kind of like a war because they waged war on us and we are now reaping the consequences. I have to bring back when was medicine first invented. And it was last known in 2600 BC. Okay. The first known mention of the practice of medicine is from the old kingdom of ancient Egypt, which is why the Rosicrucians are so huge, heavily influenced in the medical holistic industry and in politics, religion, and science. And then dating back to about 2600 BC. Later, the first known code of conduct, the code of Hammurabi, dealt with many aspects of human behavior, and most importantly for our study, established laws governing the practices of medicine. And so you know the holistic world actually came first when you actually think about it, because they didn't have a governing body and or uh, policies and procedures to deal with antibiotics and with different medicines. And so people were destroying themselves with the antibiotics, whatever they could find relief. And of course, they had to go and control that so they didn't kill off everybody in the whole civilization. Um, we know that salt has also been used as a cure, not only to cure the foods because they didn't have refrigeration, but also cure the people. Now, can I prove that Noah and Moses and those of the biblical texts live to be 900 years old? I can't prove that. Though I could see how it would be possible if you didn't have huge amounts of high frequencies and then different civilizations mixing. But you know that there were a lot of wars back in antiquity. Okay, religious wars, wars for food and survival. And so, you know, people were mixing in their DNA, but there was also the whole hominid thing. You know, we had evolution, different hominids merging with each other, making genetic lines stronger. But also, they also had their share of cannabis. They had their share of opium, but it didn't get actually formally recorded, I guess, until um, the, 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 the whole Egypt thing, <laughs> okay? And so, and so then, you know, as I am studying all this stuff and dealing with my own predisposed issues and also watching everything around this COVID-19 and then watching people deal with their cancer disease and chronic illness, <laughs> and they don't even know where it comes from. They think, oh, I have it genetically. It's my genetic predisposed issues. Okay, so that's half right. But then there is the other half that you may have genetic predisposed issues, but you always can redirect your genetic line. That's what people aren't being told in the medical holistic industry. They've been told that these are the cards that you've been dealt and now you're stuck with them. And that's where people get hopeless. They lose all sense of the future and it's just living for now, now, now and milking everything out of life and consuming everything until they pass away because they don't see themselves as redirecting the genetic line because first it's too painful once they hear that what it takes to do it. And then second, it's easier to just give up. And so <clears throat> once I've been, once I figured out the root cause of cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders, PMDD, and any new disease that's going to come up like PCV or some other really fast moving cancer. It's all from the aggressive use of antibiotics and predisposed issues and then aggressive viruses on top of that. And then with all these therapies, making people's immune system so hypersensitive, hyper um, influential and people's alimentary canals are atrophied when you think about it because of all the medicines and the tinctures and the over-the-counter drugs stopping people from mucusing out or releasing diuretically. Now they're holding on to all these proteins that are hyper-producing because of the therapies and the aggressive viruses and the high frequencies in the environment from CERN, Wi-Fi, um, DEWs, a HARP. And so it's become a perfect storm and with all the climate like all the, the, the extreme climate change with how either how cold it will be or how hot it is, that's going to accelerate the infection rate. 
Because what happens when you hold, when you put so much heat, when you incubate something, it grows exponentially and it becomes aggressive. That's why you're seeing the brain eating amoebas in these lakes and streams and even in the ocean. The ocean has high salinity. So how is it that people are, are, are contracting brain eating, flesh eating disease? Because people have open wounds, the flesh eating disease then rap replicates that quickly and takes over the body that quickly. The person doesn't have time to respond in the correct manner because they have an atrophied alimentary canal because of the years and years of antibiotic use, prescription drugs, <clears throat> and all the different therapies to stop their natural mechanisms. And then they go and get things sucked out when they go to the hospital, the MASH unit. And so, and so let me just read this. Because this is this is going to be the basis of my book, my war on the medical holistic system, because I and it's a war waged on us first. I never waged war on anyone. They waged war on me, not only in my country in Vietnam, but then also using the antibiotics against the pneumonia and whatever else I had to deal with. And so cancer equals years of ABX antibiotics use unnecessary surgeries. Unless you were being pulled out of a wreckage from an accident that was not your fault or even it was your fault, you have no reason to go under the knife for anything. But the reason why you have been is because you have listened to the medical holistic people with all their tinctures and their remedies and their pills and their powders and their supplements. And so then you have to go under the knife because you listened to the medical holistic system for so many years. So cancer equals years of ABX, unnecessary surgeries are all voluntary painkillers, over-the-counter drugs, weight loss diets, prescription drugs, and natural rem remedies like cannabis. And so I see so many people asking people to do chain letters, asking everyone to pray for people who have or had cancer, but nobody wants to understand why they had it to begin with at the root level because people refuse to hold themselves accountable for why they have the diseases they have. And no, it's not just alcohol and drug use and eating bad food and all that stuff. No, it is the continuous use of antibiotics. See, when you stop using antibiotics and you finally deal with all the viruses you've ever been exposed to, most likely you won't turn to alcohol or drugs or any other type of distractions that are destructive because you be a whole person. You have no reason to distract yourself from the pain whether it's psychological or physical. That's why we have rampant alcoholism. That's why we have, we have rampant drug use. That's why we have rampant addictions in our society because people are self-medicating because they've used continuous amounts of ABX, natural remedies, and unnecessary surgeries. And they have given their children to the medical system as well as themselves, and they have enslaved their whole genetic line into that industry. And so years and years of the medical holistic system on a body already in deficit because of the predecessors using the medical holistic system has now caused a vast amounts of cancer, high prevalence of cancer, autism, disease in children and, and in adults earlier and earlier and earlier. And so when you're using oncological remedies or oncological practices or going to freaking Mexico to go get your juicing shit, you are now putting your body even more in deficit because you're now malnourished because you know you're on your low sodium diets, your low carb diets, your low protein diets. And that's where people then deteriorate in the system and their bones start breaking down. And so war is waged in many ways. It's not always on the battlefield. <clears throat> your body is the battlefield and also the commodity. So before you ask everyone to do a chain letter, asking everyone to pray for someone who had cancer, why don't you start looking at your own practices in which you are passing down to your children, your grandchildren, before you start asking everyone to take up the time to pray for people who do have the choice in the matter now, you can always deal with your symptoms of sickness right now completely fucking differently. And if you choose not to, why should we pray for you or your friends? Because you're not any kind of example. You are no example to anyone. And so why would I spend the time to pray for you or your friends when you won't be the example to do anything differently? Do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, and then ask everyone to pray for you. So while you're smoking your doobie, 
asking everyone to do a chain letter, posting on their wall, maybe you should look at what you're doing right now, causing the situation, not only on yourself, but your offspring if you choose to have them. But yeah, you have offspring too because when you are taking all of your cannabis, your drugs, your ABX, all your surgeries, your body is also trying to develop new viral babies to then try to replace the damage that's been done. But those little viral babies in your body, those little proteins that replicate or where are the offspring from the replication from conception, they're not allowed to mature. And so you have children in your body raising children, and then you have children out there, adult children, with cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders raising children. So I scowl at the post where people are asking for everyone to post a chain letter and then say, done afterwards. And I'm saying, your goose is cooked. Don't waste your time. And so I, I, so when I'm seeing these people post this and this person who is aging has so much gray hair, they look like they are someone from the cannabis industry and they're saying, hey, pray for people who have cancer and then you're smoking your cannabis and all of your doobies and all of your stuff contributing to the cancer growth because when you're taking drugs and you're taking things that are antibiotic, what do you think the body's going to want to do? It's going to want to go and tip the balance and create vast amounts of growth because you're trying to destroy it with the drugs. And so while you're smoking your doobie and taking your drugs and your surgeries and all that stuff, and you're asking everyone to pray for them for having cancer, it's like you can't take, you can't take that person seriously. You can't. But they have to even have a buy-in to even see that their use of drugs, antibiotics, and surgeries, and the medical holistic system is a major, if not the sole contributory factor to the cancer, to the disease, to the chronic illness, and the autoimmune disorders. If they choose not to believe it, then they can justify doing their drugs and then play both sides of the fence. Oh, I want to pray for you, friend, family, stranger, but I'm still going to contribute to why you have it to begin with, but claim ignorance and feign ignorance so that way you can still keep with your destructive habits and then still pass them on but then on the other side be like okay um <laughs> i'm so sorry that you have cancer even though i'm not doing anything to represent a different way of doing things so people in the future don't get cancer because you can't save people who are that far gone we already know this so who we're talking to right now are the people who haven't done as many antibiotics, who have just had a child and they are already against big pharma, but they don't realize that the holistic world is just as bad, if not worse. And so maybe they have a chance to redirect their children's future. And so while, yes, I know I'm falling on deaf ears on those that are, that are not taking the JJ seriously and those that are still practicing all of their horrible habits in the medical industry, I'm talking to those who might have a chance to redirect their genetic line. Because I already know 99.9% .9 of the world is too far gone. In my world, 99.99% .99 of the people in the world that I live in are too far gone. But I'm still gonna talk, I'm still gonna speak. Because maybe there's one person out of 100 that will do something differently and they will represent the strongest human race, the strongest genetic line in our county, in our city, in our state, and that will change the future of humans. But first we have to get through all the dinosaurs who don't take it accountability for anything they do, but they want everyone to pray for everybody. Oh yeah, and then contribute to their GoFundMe accounts so they can do all their stupid surgeries and oncology and everything else that they have going. Or they want to take a trip. Or they have to pay for somebody's burial. You know, burial insurance is like maybe 20 bucks a month, if that less. And so there's a money making super amount of money made off of those that are on their way out the door or those that are dying. And so, no, I don't go to anybody's GoFundMe accounts or whatever. I don't go to anyone's party for the, the dead or for the living who just went through their surgery because if they know who I am, they could give a fuck about redirecting. They're just trying to make the quick buck on their way out the door. Because whatever you're giving a person is not going to do shit good for them because they haven't helped themselves. But they're willing to take handouts from everybody and their mother. 
I'm not doing that. I'm not a party to that. And so you may say, oh, you're being unkind and unempathetic. No, you have chosen this path and you want everyone to bail you out with the GoFundMe accounts and all the prayers. Why don't you take care of yourself so you don't end up in that situation? But that's, again, like I said, that's the old world. But that's the, the conundrum for the JJ crowd is how do you straddle both worlds and still try to maintain some kind of presence in the old world and then also forge new paths. Well, that's something that you will have to figure out during your process in this. So that's what's mean and unkind. So here we go. So, so I scout the posts where people are asking everyone to post a chain letter and then say done afterwards. I'm saying your goose is cooked. Don't waste your time. If you think I'm mean or unkind, you don't know what mean and unkind is when you're dealing with a fucking pain of cancer and disease and chronic illness because you still choose to use the medical holistic system for minor issues until the issues become so major, now you put yourself deeper into the hole. That's what's mean and unkind. People voluntarily destroy themselves and their friends and family. That's what's mean and unkind. They won't say anything at all to represent a different way of doing things. They won't dare say anything to anyone. They'll go and try to save someone. Oh yeah, do the J-Juice, it'll save you. But they won't say, well, you have to deal with breakthrough infection. And yeah, like Michael Gifford said yesterday, he spent six hours in pain, in agony. Six hours. Oh, I understand what he went through. I went through it for fucking days and weeks. Okay? So imagine, and he didn't have the background that I have. He, you know, I'm sure he was born in the U.S. He's in, he's in the South. He didn't have the, 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 um, the, the war baby syndrome that I had, the starvation and everything else that I had. So his six hours was, I'm sure, so fucking torturous, like my three weeks have, were, were torturous. And he still stayed with it. He didn't take anything for it, so he says, and I believe him because why would he? There's no reason to take shit for any of these symptoms. You feed it, you have to ride your ass through it, and you have to redirect and do something different in reaction to symptoms. <clears throat> and so that's what's mean and kind. People voluntarily destroy themselves and their friends and family. If there was someone like me 30 years ago, I probably wouldn't listen to them until I came down with something. And then I would probably start listening. And for some people, it'll be too late. When they're waiting for their body to break down and then do something about it, it'll be too late for them because the pain will be that great because they've put themselves so much in the hole and these viruses and the predisposed issues are even more aggressive. If they would have just preempted stuff today and got through the hardest part, whatever, I mean, and who's to say what the hardest part is going to be because everybody has different predisposed issues. They wouldn't be in the position they're going to be five years, two years, three years from now. But humans don't think that way. That's why it's so easy to get them hooked on the antibiotics right out of the gate. Because the parents don't want to deal with a child that is going through an evolution. So what do the parents do? They go get an antibiotic. They go get some kind of remedy and stop the energy. They don't want to hear the kid crying. They don't want to go and help the kid take out the mucus. They don't want to deal with anything when it comes to being a parent. They want to do the shortcuts. So they give their kid to the medical system and they pump them up with antibiotics. And now that kid's monster is even more formidable and even more aggressive. And so humans don't think about what they're doing today is going to have disastrous consequences in 5, 10, 15 years. Oh no, it's all about, oh my kid's going to this college or they just turned 18 or they just... They just won their first track meet. And so it's all about now, now, now. The accolades, the social capital, the fame, the fortune now. Don't even care about the future because they don't see the future. And so, yes, when these children are being are athletic and they have low body fat in a highly dynamic environment with predisposed issues, and then one day they're running and they fall over dead from heart failure. They will never trace it back to the fact of how many of the antibiotics they used on that child way back when COVID first came around and all the therapies and then forcing or, or encouraging the child to go into sports in a very highly hot dynamic environment such as this. No, the parents don't think about their children's future. It's all about the parents' social capital and their standing in the community and what they look like on Facebook, the image. 
And so, yeah, you know, so that's how easy it is to take down a family, association, groups of friends and all of that. And so what is it? She died peacefully in her sleep. He died peacefully in her sleep, surrounded by friends and family. That is telling. People's obituaries emulate exactly how they're living their life today. As soon as you put yourself into a group or association or a family or a situation like you see out there with people who run in groups and packs, they have died. Now they're just existing until their body and the, the system can't hold their existence anymore. And so that's why I've extricated myself from almost everybody. That's why I have gotten away from all the influences because you, as soon as you start taking part in the politics, religion, and the scientific dogmas, you have died. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so if there was someone like me 30 years ago, I probably wouldn't listen to them until I came down with something, and then I would probably start listening. For some, for some people, it'll take a few illnesses for them to wake the fuck up, other people won't survive, and they'll be so stubborn until the very end. Of course, because they don't want to feel pain, so they'll take all their pills, powder, supplements, detoxes, tinctures, and painkillers, and even do so much JJ's where they don't feel anything, and then one day when they have such low adipose tissues surrounding and protecting their uh, vital organs, they won't, they, they can't handle a crowd or a very aggressive virus that came through. So I'm probably a better parent to most adults and young children out there than adults are to themselves and their own kids because I'm willing to say the hard stuff. And I don't care if you love me or hate me. If anything, I hope you hate me because I hope that you might, it might drive you to do something different. Let me tell you, my anger for the medical system, for what I've had to go through the last 20 years of my life, 30 years of my life, 40 years of my life, has driven me to figure this out. And so sometimes hate does drive a person to figure some shit out, though don't let hate also take you down. But you have to channel your anger to not only save yourself, but give something to the community out there. Give something to fucking society, because society is tired of, of the drain of people taking the shortcuts, not wanting to face their own predisposed issues. And so that's why this virus and all the different remedies are so aggressive because that's the only way you're going to take out those that are weak is you apply them with heavy amounts of antibiotics, heavy amounts of cures, heavy amounts of antivirals, antibacterials, antimicrobials, antifungals. And I'll tell you, the holistic world people are the worst kind because they profess themselves to be different than big pharma when they're actually the same, if not worse. And they started this all because organized medicine didn't come around until 2600 BC. And then we have the Hermeticism, the Jewish mysticism, the Christian Gnosticism, also known as the Rosicrucians, who then found a way to commodify the medical holistic industry. And so everything that you thought was like, oh, it was Big Pharma was first, and then it was a holistic. No, it was the holistic people first and their alchemy, using all their different tinctures and painkillers. And then they figure out that some of that shit was really fucking poisonous and was killing people. And so they had to then go and regulate that market and turn it into a Versace white lab coat biotech industry. And so it was a holistic industry that started this bullshit to begin with, 2600 BC. And so if we're gonna, if we're gonna have some kind of accountability, we gotta take it back to antiquity. And so now every single person who is in the holistic allopathic, you better start reconsidering your path in life because you're not helping yourself, you're not helping your kids, that's for damn fucking sure, and you ain't helping your community. If anything, you're taking your community down with you because you refuse to face your own fucking demons. And so yeah, I, I had to live it. My mother was in mental health, my dad was in biotech, I had no fucking chance. And so the only way that I was able to, to figure it out was to fight for my life in my household as a child, in the community that I was living in in California, and even as a person who was almost 50 years old, I'll be 49 on February 5th. And so I've been fighting for my life for this for my whole fucking life. In a in a world of the medical holistic system waging war on both the children and the elderly and the middle-aged and on themselves. 
So, <clears throat> and so, I'm willing to say the hard stuff. I don't care if you love me or hate me. If anything, I hope you hate me because maybe that might drive you to do something different. If you think I'm great, I think you're great. If you don't think I'm great, cool. Good luck to you. Just remember, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, every single cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorder, and broken bones was kicked off by an aggressive virus and your predisposed issues from years and years and years of using the medical holistic system. So I had two infections going on during this last COVID round. I had the COVID, yes, though I didn't get the, the lack of, of taste. My husband's got his taste buds back, by the way, just so you know. But he still has a ring in his ear. But I had the second infection, which was the pneumonia that I already had predisposed in my genetic line. So I dealt with two infections during that time. And thank God I, I, thank God I triggered that beast because it was a beast that I had to deal with. And so some of you have the beast lurking inside of you that you have successfully sidestepped, but it's working against you. Eventually, when you do get the COVID and it triggers that beast inside, you're going to have to fucking face it. Some of you will not survive it. Some of you will find every way to use J-Juice or anything, something else to then stop it. And then you'll have to deal with it again and deal with it again and deal with it again until you actually fucking face it. And that's what some of you are in for. And you are not prepared for it because you still want to be cured. You think that's the way to be. No, not in this new world. That was the old world. That's why we had such rising and falling of civilizations because of the curative practices. You can't be cured in a dynamic environment full of 12 billion, 8 billion, 7 billion people mutating viruses left and right. And so, yes, adults breaking bones and children breaking bones are as a result of weaknesses in their own immune system and the virus is chipping away at them regardless if they had a therapy or not. If anything, the therapy made them weaker. And it's not just the vectors. It's all the holistic shit. So why do you think the elderly get osteoporosis? Because of years and years of the medical system breaking down their skeletal structure from all the remedies and diets and aggressive exercise. So while you think you're being a savior to people and saving them with your remedies, you're actually destroying them. That's why the saviors in The Walking Dead were looked at as killers because they were. The saviors in The Walking Dead were not the saviors. They were the ones that were terrorizing those that were trying to survive that dystopian situation. And so The Walking Dead, very, very prophetic and very right on with those in the medical holistic industry who deem themselves saviors, those in the politics, those in the religion and the scientific dogmatic world. And so I find it funny that there's people on my Facebook who are like, oh, it's the big pharma that destroyed people psychologically. And that person is a freaking, that person <laughs> sells tinctures. That person sells home remedies. And she's blaming Big Pharma for all the psychological and other issues. That's the pot calling the kettle black. That what right there is how the holistic industry is trying to come back and destroy the people yet again. She's a person still in my group. She doesn't say too much. She better not. She says anything, anything, oh, I'm deleting her ass. Yeah, when you're selling tinctures on the, on the internet, you're contributing to the cause of destruction. And that's why you see I have such a visceral reaction against anyone who doesn't understand my information, who still partakes in the medical holistic system, especially in my JJ world. And so, yeah. And so that's why I am very aggressive in my reaction to those that claim that they're saving people when they're actually doing quite the fucking opposite. They're not saving, they're destroying. And so I have a problem with hypocrisy of the medical hermeticism, Greek system. And so no, the Greek system is not the system anymore that is viable. It's destroying people. It's fun to play with hormones. Oh, we all know that. People love doing all the different psychedelics. I mean, I just watched uh, a documentary about the, the Woodstock 1999. <sighs> Woodstock 1969 was the kickoff of the destruction of humanity with the LSD and the cannabis and the free love and all the hippie bullshit. 
And then all the hippies turned into corporate executives commodifying their friends and family. That's how destructive the 1960s was to humanity. And the hippie stuff and the drugs and the home remedies and the free fucking love. And then you saw their offspring rage so hard. Watch that documentary on Netflix. It's called Trainwreck, Woodstock 1999. Michael Lang, the guy that started the Woodstock back in 1969, he did this one in 1999. He died three months after the interview, after they did the whole compilation. Oh, it's an excellent film. I, what was I doing in 99? I was actually in San Francisco during that time and or going to Mississippi during that time. I'm glad I wasn't there. That was that was a horrific thing to watch what my generation and a little bit younger were doing to each other. And yeah, they're raging against corporate, the, all the corporate stuff. They were they're raging against a lot of stuff. And now Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit, he's dealing with health issues. A lot of these people from way back when are now aging out. They're not maturing, they're aging out because the years of drug use, the years of the medical holistic system, the years of being put into the scientific experimentation system. And so you're gonna see a lot of the people who were stars are now <laughs> are obviously dying. And so I'm very happy with Audrey, with John, Gemma, Michael Gifford, Michael Savage, all the different people, Pip, Krista, if you guys, if you guys are actually facing your demons and dealing with the headaches, with the symptoms, and you are facing that, you are redirecting humanity. You are writing the future and history as we speak right now. You are the future. You are the history. That's why we're in this new world order. The old world of antiquity and using the medical holistic system is gone. It's not viable anymore. After my book is done, it will not be viable anymore. It hasn't been viable anymore. People are hanging on because they have nothing else. They don't know anything else except to party and have pleasure, but never face and take accountability for their life or their children's lives or their family's lives. It's all about have fun, party, and, and promote an image. That's it. That's the superficialness of humanity, and that's why we're in this, this free fall, this downfall. That's why we see sexual predators in our society. Because the amount of holistic and allopathic medicine used on people stopping their maturity. And so they're so stunted and all they want to do is go and have sex and go find the most fertile thing out there. And they don't care how old it is. That's how fucked up our society is. That's why you're seeing so much of the sexual deviancy in our society. Because we have people who have used the medical holistic system to such an extent it stunts their maturity. And so all they know is have sex, have pleasure, and go to sleep and die, and maybe eat. And so people aren't, aren't cultivating their brains. They're all about their bodies and all that stuff. And the love, love, love. And so you wonder why we don't see a lot of intellectual advancement from a lot of people. They have nothing to offer intellectually. They haven't cultivated their brain for fucking years. And so it, when you're on the JJ and, you, and then you get off it and you finally face the pain, you will increase your intellect. And then you will have a hard time hanging out with most people out there in society because they don't have anything to offer to you or anyone else except, oh, here, 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 hold my beer. I know I'm being very judgmental right now, but that's why people have cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders because of that mentality right there. And the poor children, the poor fucking children. But whatever, that's always been the hue and cry. Oh, save the children, save the fucking parents who will then save their own fucking kids. But no, the parents have to save themselves. Believe me, I, I would love to save everybody out there, but they have to sit in their own darkness of their own room and deal with the devil inside their body first. Then they can save themselves. They will have to deal with the high frequencies in the environment. They will have to deal with being hungry and thirsty, but cannot seem to get any satisfaction from food and water. 
where you have to intellectually make yourself drink and eat. If I, again, if I hadn't done the J juice or opened up my alimentary canal, I probably would have died the last couple weeks or I probably would have ended up in the hospital. I gotta go.